here. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's, yeah I'm sorry. I'm just meeting the last week. So we have to be nice to meet you first. Yeah. 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 Spending your money. Yes, I think so. Yeah. And yeah. that happened in your town too, right? Yeah, they, uh, you know, it is, um, it's nothing that's anti everything. So yes. Yeah, it's got about okay. so without that, then it starts to start. What they've done, I'm not sure what they're doing, except they've done what they say they're going to do over about 50 houses, but they haven't done any of the underground stuff yet, which is miles. That's where we are right now, and they've been they've taken care of us for all well over the years. Good morning, how are you? We still have the underground across the state roads, and they haven't done um. Like I said, and we have about eight or nine miles that are underground, which they haven't done anything with yet. just said he was going to have instructions and follow and set the meeting up. So give me just a second and then I'll. And Teddy is being pulled off the property. So. Oh, he is. Yeah. He's lost his contractor status. So I said, Who do I talk to now? He's supposed to get me that. Well, it's um, it's frustrating. I think I'm turning this off for the uh, duration. I don't know. <laughs> 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 It's only there's only about sixty to clean the apartments, sixty houses. Yeah, in our house, in our town, it's fifty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're three times the size. Small percentage. Subdivision where the houses are not spaced far apart, the driveways are not insane. You clean those, sorry, but they do all the other ones. Okay. And then there's a couple of really isolated houses. I understand why it's well, you know, we to just do. make sure we don't join with the audio. I guess okay. here's where we want to make sure. And he said, I don't know. So, yeah. I said, who should I talk to? Oh, well, you know, that that St. John or is it John the other guy? Joe Oresco. Joe Oresco. But St. John. St. John. Hey, if you have any of those names or numbers that you could share, I'd like to share them. Which that would be great because I'd love to find an answer about you know, the houses that they left for us. Now, you know, it's um, it's it's frustrating, okay. not okay. from the point of view. Oh, actually, it, 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 um, it actually should be. Uh, it was painstaking be because they kept right, giving right. one piece of information that another piece, and nothing meant nothing matched. Right. Um, and um, and everything, but finally dealing with Joe Oresco, I thought was by far the most productive conversations I've had. Because I said you told us you were doing one hundred percent. He said no, I didn't. I said I got four people here who sat in the meeting and you said, yeah, you know, I did it as nice as I could. So in any case, I stopped arguing that point. But he's he's pretty straightforward. But they yeah. showed us all the maps, they showed where all the terminals were. Right. And there were a couple of areas where they had five roofs, they didn't have terminals. Sorry, right. now we do get started. I'm going to reverse Okay. And you took the... One of the things they did, and actually they came through, one of the guys in town that I know, they won't call me and said, I have no internet because Frontier is down. And they told me they can charge, they'll charge me $90 to come fix it, or I can get sign up for fiber. We said, I got a postcard from them and said fiber is available. And then they sent me an email the next day and said, Oh, we didn't mean it. No. <laughs> but well, I, my, I, so I, I told think, Mike Chiquetti about it. And Mike is it me? Okay, he is not. Are we supposed to be up in the room? It could be 
Sunday, Monday, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, with the owl. So I'm thinking. Oh, I see you. Yeah, care about oh, people who have the problem. Yeah, they're hooking us up. You have people who never. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Leo. So then I can turn off this video. Then we're we're getting hooked up, but then they have yeah. to splice a line Thank first. So much. Yep. And you see them splice? You're good. You get a guy, you sit there in a chair like this on the side <laughs> of the road with a card table. Correct. Yeah. And he's splicing it. If it's rainy, he puts an umbrella over his head. <laughs> and he's sitting there at the side of the road. And it's got to be a pain. I mean, there's how many, I don't know how many fibers there are on one of those tables. There's a lot. There, well, it, it's, uh, it's very okay. difficult. This is a job that uh, this is AI was made for. He was splicing. <laughs> But uh, I, it's um, so I was they coming from the two fifty six cable down to the on the cable. It was just it was interesting because they, he had to do the two hundred fifty six grand cable since he was literally done for two days. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. And I just kind of looked at this guy and said, Yeah, it's fine. This is the worst job. <laughs> he said, Well, yeah, pretty much you're right. <laughs> if you're on the side of the road, there's another guy who's directing traffic. He's out there for eight hours a day doing nothing for the six cars that come by. Mm -hmm. very many busy roads. So the guy at least is doing something by like the table. The other guy just came on, you know, mm -hmm. that's the worst job. And I think your fault is probably somewhere between all you could do. And then you got hooked up. Is there anything in West Harlem, though? Yes. Yeah. Again, they piecemeal. Anything has to go across the highway. You know, there's no answer to that. The original map I saw, he sent me a spreadsheet. There were 50 addresses in West Harlem listed for Park Hampton. And I said, you know, those aren't Park Hampton. They're not Riverton. They're in West Harlem. Oh, we didn't know that. Because they use the West, they use the Riverton Post Office for West Harlem. It, it's, we, <laughs> so uh, I, I, Curtis got a bunch of people done right across the road because they're Falls Village Post Office. And the same exchange yeah. as our exchange. So he got some people in his town. So he got some of the people down in his town. I've tried to win. I need a camera to have a So I'm kind of keep patient. Of course, I'm just on the down road there. I'd like to get mine. So which side of the road did they run? They didn't do Route 20. And they did not do Route 20? They did not do Route 20. And they did that to part of the mountain road, which is one of the So, again, anything that's going to stay high with it, then we have to get it. So it's not done. Because I think they did 44 in my town. They did 219. They did 179. Okay. And they, like, we have one little subdivision that's half underground, half above ground. So they've done the above ground part. And the below ground is on the list. Uh, next thing, I think I'll call Joe Resco next week and say, um, I, I am, I you have am, a schedule. I am, I'm just at the point where I just, um, let us see. <laughs> I mean, I heard what is that? You've been too fast. You got shut down by the state. Well, I think when they told us we had a meeting in, in December, and I had three or four people on our committee. We had a Resco, St. John, Mike Chiquetti. And there might have been one more person there. And they gave us a nice presentation, told us what they're going to do, and they're going to get fully done by the end of March. I took that with a bit of a grain of salt. And then, so then they came to town, they started working. They started out, you were the first one, I think they did. Mm -hmm. Then they came to Winstead and came to us. They came from Granby up to you. Right. And they were moving right along, and then it sort of slowed down. So I thought to Joe Resco probably. End of January. Right? We're going to meet the end of March. He said, well, well, we should have most of the above ground done by the end of March. The underground is going to spill over into April, probably by the end of April, early May. I said, okay, you know, 
and now it's mid-May, and as far as I know, they've done no underground. Well, the people that have signed up for it in our town, uh, well, first of all, if if we get a gig and get, I think it was YouTube TV and and the phone, it's like 160 bucks a month. Yeah, for us, and you know, they do YouTube TV through there. Yeah, they do YouTube TV. Yeah, it's expensive. Well, I'm paying YouTube TV seventy two dollars now. I think it is. All right. I'm paying Charter eighteen dollars for my own phone, and I got Charter's minimal two hundred, three hundred down, and fifteen up, and that's fifty nine. Seventy-seven. Okay. That's about hundred and forty bucks. I can hear that. Did you serve? But then I gotta switch my cell phone. Check the mobile. Oh, okay. Then I gotta switch my email because I've had charges on that forever. Yeah. Some of the other companies, if you don't have their internet or you know, contact with them, they make you they give you a month or two not use their email. So I gotta take. The last 20 years of emails, which every account, every credit card, every everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an administrative nightmare. No, I'm really lucky because I've got hotmail. I've had no hotmail since the. Uh, yeah, I should have done something like that. It, it got 75 years. I was say, like, that has to have been. That's, yeah. yeah. Well, I still have people that have. Net.net, net. really? That's old. How, how old is that, right? Pre, yeah, that was a global. Yeah, that was yeah. That. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> I tried to get my father to change. He had AOL. Oh. And God, it was just, it was so painful. <laughs> it was, uh, of course, he was 90 <laughs> at the time. But, you know. Getting them to the computer age was uh, an interesting task. I have regular frontier before they go to the past week. I pay ninety dollars a month, but it is terrible. Oh, it's slow, slow, slow. Slow, slow, slow. That is my activity. Well, it saves us about one hundred and fifty bucks a month. I can't wait. I'll go down to forty nine. Here, here's the risk. So once you start streaming, you start signing up for a YouTube TV. You sign up for Hulu. You sign up for <laughs> Peacock, and all of a sudden you start hitting it, and you get them because you want to watch a certain show. Yeah. Right. And once that show is done, you got to be smart enough to cancel it. I think know? they're in cahoots with one another. Yeah. Like... I, know, I cannot cancel them. So I, one of these is I'm going to sit down and list all the little things I pay. Yeah. It's, it's really, really hard. I, it is a shock. We actually did that exercise because we got rid of cable. And my husband and I like the Super Bowl. Like that's only on one streaming service that is like fifty bucks a year. So I I don't know. So, and then um, but we had forgotten to cancel it from last year, and he was so upset. I was like, well, we're gonna watch the Super Bowl again this year. So we might as well. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and we did that exercise though. We went through all the different streaming services, and by the end of the day, you're paying about you know. The same as you would have paid for cable. Well, what I do is you can't watch UConn basketball on Kubo. You can't watch the Red Sox on TV. So I do YouTube TV for half a year and Kubo for half a year. Yeah. And then I can do <laughs> The price is the same. The service is about the same. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the what's the next step with the, you know, what are you thinking? I mean, what's the next step with this? I think we've got a, a, there are two issues that I think are really pervasive, uh, especially, uh, I don't know if you're completely covered by municipal homes in your area, but in our area, we're not at all. And the, one of the reasons I want a universal coverage is that there are people that when the frontier lines went down, uh, uh, mobile service was still working in in our town during a storm right. but i had somebody whose husband had a heart attack mm. had to drive to the center of town to get mobile service to call an ambulance to get into a hospital oh, by that time and you know that's one of the reasons i want a universal uh, uh internet 
uh, fiber optic internet because then you can maybe at some time somebody will come through and put through a, a small antenna service throughout town and everybody would have internet or would have mobile phone service which i think is a safety issue right yeah mm -hmm. it is a safety issue oh, yeah. what was the biggest barrier what do you think blocked the most um oh it's very very simple it's all about taxes everybody is so ballistic about taxes but the only way that you can lower taxes is by increasing development and it's harder to increase development if people can't get the services that they're used to yeah. Yeah. so for the 50 or 60 houses in your town that are not being covered what are they, they going to charge a quarter million uh 350,000 see if I took that to a town meeting I would need police protection. <laughs> yeah, right. But it doesn't just it doesn't seem like that much money. We're small, no, yeah, we're in small towns. Yeah. Small yeah. towns are frugal. Yeah. 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 So yeah. the character to change. So then you've got the block in the development. And this is true. But they also want to lower taxes. So let them my backyard. Right. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. A challenge. But we have no services. We don't have, we have one restaurant in East. Yeah, that's a good it. restaurant. It's a great restaurant. <laughs> back in there. And they live in Barton. <laughs> <laughs> no. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. They live. Oh, you don't know an 81 on the center hall. You're struggling. Hey, thank you. Everybody, stop. Charlie, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Nice people. I am cool. I, I, I got a kick out. I went to, uh, you know, Pam and I go up to the industrial kitchen a lot. Oh, yeah. In that. That is really good. <laughs> it is. No, it's very good. Where's the industrial kitchen? It's in uh, right in the center of town. Yeah. It's uh, and it's owned by the same. It's owned by the son of the guy that owns Romans, right, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's a nice bar and grill. You know, it's you get a decent meal and some right drinks. On Forty four. Yeah, what? right on. Well, if you come into the center of Canaan, yeah, uh, go across the railroad tracks, take a right, and be on your right hand side. Okay. Yeah. Right across from the theater, it just got sold. It's uh it's a nice place to go because they make a great drink, which is very important for me. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, my wife doesn't drive or doesn't drink, so she's I always have a designated it can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a weird story. Well, it's like Ocean State, but a little bit lower level. And it's one of those stories you go in there, you can do really well, or you can't find anything you want, and you're really frustrated. I hate Ocean State for the same reason. That's a lot of people love Ocean State, they love, you know, like Ollie's. So, Ollie's. That's that one right Ollie's open. It's a southern chain that's slowly moving north. Hmm. That's like an ocean state. Uh, I I actually love our local store called Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. My best friend. laughs> well, even more nice about Amazon now is they deliver any day of the week. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they'll deliver on a Sunday. You can buy, you know, bars of soap if you want. You can buy anything you want. You don't have to get in your car and go to the store. Yeah, I like that. They part. come in they any select. kind of vehicle, though. Did you have you noticed that? Mostly, like, they, mostly not just families on trucks. Well, you see the small vans with the sports on They come through our neighborhood. We live right in that, like, main Bishop's Corner of West Harper, like the yeah. Albany and um, and Maine. And it, they come in it, white unmarked vans cars um you know the big amazon you know yeah, van, DHL any, van that's yeah it. any any kind of hertz van no. like they'll they just they must just outsource like we were first hard for sunday afternoon we had lunch and then we went down to hartford to the theater works oh yeah we went to the gastro pub in west hartford what what do you think well, I, they had the best lobster rolls. Yeah, aren't they good? What, what, which truck, truck was there? Enough. But it was a beautiful day. We sat outside. It's so awesome. It was everything it? from people my age that 
Yeah. The age of your kids, so outdoor. We love bringing the kids there because, well, first of all, they love the trucks, the food trucks. <laughs> and then the, I have two little boys. And then they also just, I mean, you they can run around and create the, you know, their. Well, actually, we saw them. They were sleep. I, it was so much fun. Yeah. I, uh, being in that kind of environment. I mean, if it was a rainy day and you were inside, it would be different. So. Yeah. Sunday was actually beautiful. And it is cool because if you if it is a rainy day, you can go indoors. Get a beer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's for the bar. <laughs> There's actually a cocktail truck that comes sometimes. A cocktail truck. I don't remember what it's called, but they make like fancy mixed drinks out of this little truck. That's all the rain. Well, it's not the Sunday. It is early. Yeah, yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Same. Because we're going to yeah. go through the Put this towards me. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, basically, and that's why I want to make sure they, yeah. they, they were very good. Yeah. I just got them. You just walk into his office. Yeah. I think that that's what we have. We're just going to be on the conference call with a couple other guys in the office. Yeah. 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 Small. It's a sure. Yeah, it's really down. Yeah. The only way we're going to get this other one, two, three percent done is going to be to pay the federal money to figure out how to get it. So we have to keep up track of that. What's going on? Because he's got, let's say, three hundred thousand dollars worth of homes not done. I have about the same. It's a higher percentage of his town than mine. We have 50 or 60 houses out of 16 or 1700. Yeah. Probably, yeah. I think that. Uh, 650. Yeah. I think that federal money is going to be slow coming. And I think the state and, money, who knows? Because they've been in an eight month process of figuring out what to do with it thus far. As far. Like quite reasonable yeah. versus. Inner city, Hartford, Bridgeport, whatever. Yeah. Somehow we have to figure out who we are disadvantaged. Do you? Well, yeah. Uh, the good thing is that we still are glowing on the map in terms of being not served. So I mean, you know, that that is a good thing. So I guess if and, you can keep track of what's going on in Hartford with that money. Yeah, I I was wondering if I mean I will certainly reach out to Kevin. I don't if you think that makes sense. Maybe it's time to have another. Northwest Hills yeah, check in with you. We them. spoke to Tim about doing that. And I don't know if everybody said so. Norfolk at their town meeting is we turned down turned funds. Down. So Tim decided he had wasted the last eight years or nine years of his life. Oh. So he claims he's stepping away from it totally because he has some other priorities and okay. initiatives he's involved in. Okay. And well, so, you know, getting together with Kevin would be great. Okay. Do you, do you want, um, how do you want to do that? Do you want you us to reach out? Them, okay. set it up on behalf of the cog, and then yeah. sure. So I mean, we could, we, can do Zoom, we, yeah. we could do Zoom. I mean, I was going to even say, I don't know if you'd be up for it, but what about asking him if we could meet him in Hartford? I think we can get him engaged anyway, whether it's in person or in Zoom. Yeah. So I mean, if we show the effort to go to him and. Is he, is he in the building of course in the Brooklyn? Probably. That's a nice building. It's easy to access. It's deep. Yeah, that's right in there. Yeah, it's easy to park. Yeah. On the, and, yeah. On my train to Which one? Oh, F-O-I. <laughs> yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's a time for a check-in. Maybe he can tell us something. I don't know if there's any. I was, you were saying some, the Chiquetti, he was with um, Frontier, right? He was the vice president of government affairs at Frontier. Frontier. He's not he got true. laid off, but then they hired him back as a contractor, and his primary job was their fiber mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I talked to him yesterday, and it's a Friday. He is back to looking for a job. Because, oh, he's not. Because they, they terminated the contract. Oh. So I said, who should I talk to? Who should be quiet and not Yeah. 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 Ye
And then the, um, the other person at the same rate, the uh, Steve, no, Sarah, and the. Um, I, I never talked to her, really, but I know she was. Back in time, he was wearing like a. Yeah. The tank goes on to the road and you know, nice. Um, yeah, and then he probably found that Mark Bowden in the one shop. And Mark Bowden is a hundred inches in the heart on this way. Part of the paper and it's quite a good one. But he like setting a meeting with them too. Yeah. I yeah, he was um at the CCM conference been along it. He just strikes up conversation with anybody. So. Yeah. I'll be a good guy next year. Well, I mean, not maybe setting a big. Yeah. Okay. I'll try to do that. I don't know. I mean, I'm just confused. That meeting that we sat that um, Kim and I both sat at the. It just was a lot enough. Yeah, these guys see whether it's fresh and That's okay. Yeah, my house is refreshing our date. Um, you know, the ending for the set. So if we could get a clear picture, I'll It's like a dichotomy here. Like there's, you know, there's people that live here that are forever. That's a different group than, you know. Others yeah. who have come to New York or the other be a lot of and some of the I would have some of the Everybody that didn't have to be kidding or announcer, but they care for the other five pounds. So that's what they have. So they have the most of the we sent a lot of time to the machine to the Yeah. But Comcast is never going to spend on the job. very high. And especially since we work there, I'm going to be full of supply. 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 I'm going to be I have a little that won't 
for us. So now we're going to look at the case that we have a full plug in. That's not the school. Okay. We don't know what more you see for a while. Students have Good morning, everybody. Uh, you can hear me, I hope. Thumbs yeah, up. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> apologies for not being there in person. I a uh, little bit, a uh, little bit out of my control here, where my location is right now. But uh, uh, at any rate, um, do we have, a, as far as quorum purposes, do we have, do we have ten? We have twelve actually. There's one online. Oh, okay. I'm missing. I missed a couple in my count from the screen here. Okay. Uh, either way, <clears throat> looks like we're in good shape to discuss the. Uh, uh, the returning item on the agenda, the uh, potential NHCOG office move from the existing location to space uh, in, in advance. Um, <clears throat> just to kind of go over the, at the 10,000 foot level again, uh, the uh, at advanced space would encompass approximately uh, 3,234 square feet. Uh, 1,663 square feet of that would be actual office space, physical office space for the staff. Uh, 1,571 square feet would be uh, essentially our share for any number of conference room spaces that are located in the facility. 
the uh, the office space that was itself would be uh, is proposed to be ten dollars per square foot, uh, and the and the conference room space that uh, again we have uh, at least four different options uh, to choose from depending on our schedule and the availability uh, would be at a discounted rate of five dollars per square foot. Um, <clears throat> all utilities, technology, and custodial uh, uh, work. The custodial work. This is the inside, outside of the facility, um, all the utilities that are required to uh, have the, the building uh, in operation, uh, all of those would be a flat fee that's worked into the proposed lease agreement. Um, custodial will be about $3,000, utilities 1,200. There's also a technology uh, uh, allowance, if you will. And uh, we, we do use at advances currently as our uh, IT provider for anything that we, any needs that we have from an IT standpoint. Uh, that would be $3,000 and that would be basically full access to those IT services. So uh, right there down the hall uh, for anything we need at any time. Um, and what I'm gonna do right now is <laughs> just show you a quick outline of, share my screen. Uh, okay, here we go. All right, I just received this blueprint, uh, which I'm gonna have uh, uh, an accurately scaled drawing. This is what we would use for our uh, out, you know, our basically the, the way we're gonna break out or fit out space. Um, and then that would be submitted for any building permits that would be necessary for that work. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, this on the left-hand side, you can see uh, a sidewalk uh, that leads into the back entrance of the facility. That would be a staff only entrance. Uh, it's behind secure security, secure gates. Uh, there would be, a, you know, employees would have codes. Uh, anybody, any visitors, including anybody coming from meetings would come in the front door of the facility and sign in as you normally would for the building. So it provides a very secure environment. As you walk through the back door um, from that point of view, on the left, there would be one large office uh, on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, there's two offices, one of which we would probably use as a, uh, a storage space for our files and other pieces of equipment that we have. Uh, there is an adjoining door there as well. Uh, moving down the hallway on the left-hand side, you'll see um, uh, looks like three off uh, classroom spaces that are actually in, labeled 123, 124, 125. This is a pre-existing condition. The, the, re, the current layout right now is 124 and 125 has no wall. That wall has is, is been removed, so it's one large space. And then over here uh, in 123 is, uh, is kind of a partial wall. There's a doorway uh, we would close off and then uh, we would create one office here. And then this in this area of 124, 125, this is where the work would primarily happen. We would have, uh, you know, how, as we talked about it with the contractors, we would have basically a wall, internal wall, demising wall uh, developed, constructed within the space here, which then would be partitioned off into three office spaces. So one, two, and three. And then over in here, there would be uh, where there's a door coming into the main, this would be kind of our main uh, NHCOG entrance. There would be a, uh, an open office layout here, and then another on the other side of the wall, there'd be a short wall wow. here. Uh, there will be what we call condo space, which we could use for interns or anybody else who's coming into the office to use our space for a period of time, such as a consultant uh, like Leo that's sitting there with you. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's it. There's really not a lot of work that's associated with this. And again, we'll have all this drawn out uh, accurately, and I can I can share this again if need be. But this is generally uh, the the space that would be available to us. And in in, in the future, if there's expansion needs. There is space within the facility currently that could be utilized, not necessarily adjacent, but uh, other space within the facility um, that we could uh, we could discuss. Um, just to kind of quickly go through, uh, I'm going to go through the lease. As let me just share my screen again. <laughs> got to open up a different different file. Actually, no, I don't. I open the same file. I got to go to a different tab. Okay. Should be able to see the lease now. Yeah. Okay, so what I did here, is this the existing uh, or the uh, original language that was supplied uh, from uh, negotiations at advance? And what I did here is I tried to go from a, a, a before and after approach. Uh, everything in yellow highlight are items that we have adjusted um, 
and negotiated since the very beginning of the original lease. Um, so we've obviously discussed the last meeting um, that we had some remaining uh, issues that we wanted to uh, to talk about with the uh, with the landlord. And uh, as a result of those issues, uh, some language was changed in, in section two term uh, instead of 60 months, I believe it was, or 62 months, it's been reduced to 58, reflecting the change in timelines that we would need uh, in order to make this work <clears throat> for ourselves and our end. Uh, and I will, I will add that the space that we're looking at occupying is currently empty. It's been empty for probably the last month or so. Um, <clears throat> So, so could the lease would technically, the payments would technically initiate on September 1st, 2023. Um, we removed the word mutually uh, just because it was an unnecessary, deemed an unnecessary word in that language as far as uh, an additional extension uh, clause. Uh, <clears throat> we also uh, memorialized uh, a rate of increase of no greater than 2% for each year of the agreement. Uh, and that would... Uh, and that would that that would be uh, subject to the extension terms uh, if we choose to do the extension as well. <clears throat> uh, the rent section three again reflects uh, a different start date uh, as far as the amount of money due that first year. It, the rate per month has not changed, and that rate's based on ten dollars per square foot. Our current, just for comparison purposes, our current uh, square footage is at the where you are right now is uh, approximately. Uh, 2,280 square feet. We're paying 26,000 uh, and we're going to pay 26,000 in our ninth year starting on July 1st. And that equates to about a little over 2,000 a month at $11.27 per square foot. So these terms are actually lower than what we're paying right now. Okay, and so in, in line with the uh, delayed start date of the lease, uh, we, we worked in some language that the leasee uh, <clears throat> would have access to the premises to our area beginning on June 1st for any uh, improvement needs that we have or any, any other needs that we have as far as getting any kind of uh, materials and equipment in there. Um, <clears throat> of course, we have to submit drawings of these for, uh, for building permit, but we also have to submit drawings for the, uh, the lesser to, uh, to approve those drawings and, and the plans for the fit out. Uh, there was some language added that if there is a default uh, or otherwise vacation of the uh, the premises prior to June 30th, 2028, that we would bring the uh, space back to the original state, uh, which is not unreasonable. Um, language was added uh, to Section 8, Utilities, Maintenance, and Other Services, and that was to be sure that the lease is not responsible for any utilities, maintenance, or other services outlined uh, above and the cost increases for these items. So, for example, if uh, the costs go up for, you know, certain, you know, maybe heating oil goes up, uh, we're not going to be responsible for our portion of the increase in heating oil. This is going to, our, our lease arrangement is going to stay the same. So it's just kind of doubling down here as far as making sure it's clear that uh, we're only responsible for what the payments are outlined in the uh, the earlier section. And let's see. I think that was about that was about it on the uh, the changes. I will say that I also reached out to Attorney Patrick Power um, for a legal opinion on our liability for ending the lease before the end of the second extension agreement. And his opinion is that uh, besides the 120 day uh, formal notice that we have to uh, supply with our landlord. Uh, the three we would only be liable for the three month early termination fee, uh, not uh, being liable for the rest of the two year period of the extent lease extension, the five year extension. Um, <clears throat> I had a conversation with Chris Sanders of the Goshen Housing Trust, the landlord, this morning, and uh, we just I told him our current status and, and what may happen, and we had a quick discussion about um, uh you know, that 120 days, as well as a three day, um, you know, three day penalty, as I understand, or he understands uh, the three day penalty was basically uh, based upon uh, the, uh, the improvements that were made. Um, and since that was within the first five years that he doesn't believe that that would uh, necessarily be applicable, but he's going to have a meeting with his board tonight. Anyway, I guess it was pre-scheduled. And they will discuss those, uh, you know, if there is an action today, he will discuss those actions and, uh, and any, you know, potential um, 
reduction in that three month early termination fee. But uh, either way, you, obviously, if they, if they have to show the place, uh, they would definitely, uh, you know, prefer to have the 120 days uh, in advance for them to be able to show the place and see if they can find a, a future tenant. Um, so I think that kind of covers everything I mentioned at the last meeting are we have three contractor quotes, one and sort of the fit outs of the space. Uh, one was well north of $100,000. Um, I think that they just weren't interested in entertaining the work. Another one came in that really didn't have a, a, a fee to it. It was just a, a design as to what they would do for the space. And then we had another uh, another quote come in, which we believe is the is the uh, preferred contractor for uh, from Plurd, uh Drywall. It's it's uh, forty seven thousand five hundred twenty two dollars, and that's again majority of that work would be in that unfinished space or the larger space, I should say, and finishing it off in three offices. What I will say though is part of that quote uh, included some new flooring, which I don't think we're going to need to do. The, the existing carpet is in pretty good shape. I don't see a real need there, so that would probably reduce that. Um, probably at least fifteen thousand uh, dollars in price. So we're talking in, in the low thirties to fit out that space by uh, by September first. So uh, with that, I, I think I've kind of covered everything. I'll enter any questions, uh, entertain any questions, open the floor for discussion. Um, Mr. Chair. Is there uh, any questions about this? I hear none. Do we have a motion to approve the lease? I'll make the motion. Maybe. Second. Uh, discussion for a second. So has this was the board approved uh, the renovation costs or uh, decided where that money's coming from yet? Uh, uh, we have certainly talked about it enough, but I don't know if we've actually approved it. Okay. I think that that would be a, it should be part of a, a secondary motion after the lease, lease discussion. Okay. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. I think we got, just for the record, I think that Rob followed through on the item that he uh, was asked to do while it's not highlighted in section two. There is the early termination if that sells. Right. So, no, I think that he answered all the questions that we had at our executive committee meeting uh, or got them into the lease. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and it's up the answer about this lease here, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, all those in uh, favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? So, the motion passes. I think that we need a second motion, uh, Dan, to approve the renovation expense, which is separate. Does Rob have a recommendation where that money's coming from? Rob? Yeah, I, I, at one, yeah, uh, thank you. At one point, uh, not too distant past two meetings ago, I believe it was, there was discussion about, uh, it was part of the remanding of this discussion to the executive committee, um, but there was uh, a motion of some sort that was not to exceed 50,000 as far as the renovation or the uh, fit out uh, costs, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm making the assumption that can come out of the unencumbered fund balance that we have, um, which again, I don't know the exact number, but it's uh, approaching in and around uh, 1 million, 900,000 or so. Um, that would be my recommendation is to is to just un, you know go into those untapped funds at a maximum of 50,000. I don't see any way possible we're gonna approach that number. And that could include moving expenses, uh, literally hiring a mover to bring whatever we're going to be bringing from the facility, from this existing uh, space to the new space. They'll do all the IT hookup for us as part of the lease. Yeah. Uh, th yes. They're they're gonna they're gonna do what, well. There there will be a small cost as far as moving our servers and, and everything over there, but uh, they would uh, they would have everything set up to receive those servers as well too. And we do have a quote for a new phone system, which we're gonna do anyway, no matter what. Um, and I think it's just under $2,000. Uh, we, we need to get rid of our existing phone system because our provider has gone out of business and we, we can't do any anything to modify the way we have the, the phone system set up. And it, I don't like the, really the way it works. I, I think we need to, to change the way our distribution goes as far as someone calling in from the outside. I make a, a new motion to authorize uh, our executive director to uh, 
give notification of termination of lease and to expend up to $50,000 for renovations at our new facility in advance uh, to include um, all moving expenses. And that money should be taken from our undesignated uh, fund balance. We'll come back to the 50 dollars we'll Is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? No, that motion is approved. So you're ready to rep. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. I do have a I do have a few other things to talk about on the agenda. If I can uh, go quickly, I know it's ten twenty now. Um, <clears throat> just a uh, a word on the just a word on the audit as far as the uh, correction action uh, correction corrective actions that we have in place at this point in time. Uh, you know, again, we had uh, uh, several uh, findings that came out uh, basically primarily due to changeover in office staff, uh, both at our local uh, at, here at NHCOG, also at the state level as well, too. Um, when you have uh, your, your, the people that you, you know, rely on as far as the funding per, uh, funding streams that are coming into us, uh, when they have so much train changeover, that can become difficult as well to make sure that everything is lined up. Uh, however, um, However, sorry, I have a knock on the door. Uh, however, uh, <clears throat> what we have in, in place internally, as far as our accounting uh, practices, we do, we did hire uh, Cynthia Rines with, with my office um, and, uh, and she's already been coming in. We've been, you know, we, we worked on the closure of the past audit as far as the journal entries that needed to be made. And what we're doing uh, currently and moving forward over the next fiscal year is we're gonna have their services um, coming in once a month, pro probably about five or so, five to seven hours as we discussed, and primarily monthly, do the monthly reconciliation, which is something we need to do, as you know, from a separation of, of duties to make sure that, uh, you know, we have another set of eyes on our monthly uh, financial statements. And uh, so they're gonna provide that service as well as making sure that anything that we, uh, that we post is posted in the correct period. As it goes, as it as it's um, associated with accrual accounting. So, uh, with that, uh, that's kind of what I would call the bottom up approach. We're going to have our uh, ourselves uh, covered as far as making sure that the, the books are you know what they should be. Uh, and then, as far as the uh, top down approach, I do have I have in, uh, engaged with a former uh, Cog financial director, very long tenure, and we're working on. Um, kind of reformatting the way our budget looks. You're going to see this at the June meeting. And uh, instead of it basically kind of being a cash in cash out basis, which you're used to seeing, this is going to be a little more robust as far as uh, the total amount of dollars coming into uh, NHCOG and the total uh, amount of dollars coming out, including whatever share we're keeping for uh, doing the work that we do, uh, staff hours, as well as uh, consulting, any consulting uh, arrangements and contracts. So uh, the way I like to look at it from a scientific standpoint, my, my old background is that it's a chain of custody from one dollar that comes in to the, to the dollar that comes out. So uh, you'll see a completely different format uh, for the for the June meeting um, for the uh, for the budget review and approval. And that's kind of uh, that I want to mention that as well as uh, also I really like to get the uh, what I used to call the uh, want the home and home series uh, right we, we go out and we we'd sit down with each chief elected official for about an hour and uh, just have a one-on-one -on -one and just talk about what's affecting, you know, what's important to your town, what you need in, from your town. Uh, and then being able to get, you know, get our eyeballs out there as far as, you know, what makes your town unique. So I'd like to start that again this summer. Now that we've kind of cleared through the uh, onboarding process with new staff over the last year, having two onboarding at more than, is more than one. And you can, you can definitely tell because everybody's learning. Um, what their new roles are. So, uh, at any rate, <clears throat> I just uh, just a heads up that we'll probably be co contacting you and, and trying to set up trying to set up uh, meeting appointments for for that purpose. And the last thing I think I had was I can pull my agenda back up again. Okay. Oh yes, uh, bylaws and personnel rules review subcommittee. So. On the, the topic of the budget, uh, traditionally you've approved your budget in June from what I can tell from looking at past agendas, but the bylaws say that you shall approve it in May. So uh, current, so obviously the current practice is different than what the bylaws are and that's fine. 
but the bylaws really need to reflect what the reality is. So that's just one example of um, one of those two documents we need to, to review, uh, hopefully here this summer. And so I'm just basically putting out a uh, request that if anybody's interested in reviewing bylaws and personnel rules uh, to just contact me and we'll, we'll try and set up a subcommittee to do so, uh, working with the executive committee. Um, and, uh, and that's really it. You don't have to tell me now, but you can send me an email or what, or what have you if you have interest. Uh, otherwise, if there's no one interested, we'll, we'll do it as a staff with the executive committee and move forward from there. So that's it from my reports, 1025. I don't want to take up too much time. I know we, we missed our, our uh, you know, our, uh, our round tables, two, three out of the last four meetings. So I wanted to save time for that. Any questions, just let me know. Thank you. Anyone to uh, hearing no questions or comments, let's go on to the uh, uh, Rebecca. Uh, yeah. I'm hello, all. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so thanks for having us in today to talk about the Regional Performance Incentive Program, or what we refer to as our PIP. Um, just to give you a really brief overview of the program, it is a competitive grant. It was established in 2007 and has been administered by OPM. It's really intended to facilitate regional shared services. Um, the source of funds for the program is through the um, Regional Performance Incentive Account, which comes from rental car and hotel taxes. The grant program is open to COGS and Regional Education Service Centers only. Um, there are no caps on individual awards. However, there are parameters on regarding re grant recipients taking on um, the cost of the services over the life of the grant contract. And I'll get into that in a moment. There were some changes made to the program in 2021. So if any of you are familiar with it um, in prior iterations, it used to allow for planning studies. However, that was changed in 2021 through public act. And now the program is limited to really to providing services. And it specifically says a service that any one or more towns currently provides that is not provided on a regional basis. Um, there are also provisions for redistributing certain grants like steep or low SIP. Um, that's a very uncommon for the program, though. Uh, the statutes also um, specify the criteria for award of the grant. Um, and I'll just go through them quickly so you have an idea of what it is that OPM is, is looking at and when they receive grant applications and review them. Um, the first is that the project could benefit all members, not that necessarily all members of the COG would participate in the grant, but that there is um, you know, reason to believe that the, the overall project could ultimately benefit all members, be open to all members, and over time could perhaps serve all members. The second is that, there, um, that the project overall shows an increase in efficiency of delivery of, of services, um, whether that's an economic efficiency and or capacity in service delivery, that there's a positive cost benefit to the members that are participating, that there might be a diminished need for state funding for those services, um, and that there might be increased cost savings for those participating municipalities. The third general criteria is that the service promotes co uh, cooperation among members that are participating, that it's approved by the majority of the members of the COG, whether they're participating or not. And then the last is that there, um, that any affected or potentially impacted em employee unions are informed of the grant application and the project proposal. So some additional changes that were made in 2021 um, to the grant program include that it has to be, the project has to be structured so that at least 25% of the cost of the service delivery is funded by the COG in it, the first year of operation. Um, and that by the fourth year, the COG is taking on 100% of the operating costs of the project. So the intention behind that was just the grant is supposed to help you establish and get a program up and running, but that the COG, however the COG 
wishes to structure that will take on increasingly the cost of operating the program so that it becomes self-sufficient. Um, I can tell you that the, this administration is generally interested in seeing more efficiency in day-to-day -day operations on a municipal level. Um, so there's a real interest in services that are currently replicated on a town-by-town -town basis that could perhaps be done regionally. Um, so that's a that's a quick general overview of the program. I'm happy to answer any questions. I know Amanda is here from CCOG to to talk about an actual project. Any questions? That's what I'd be interested in. See what the other cogs are proposing and uh, yeah, how this is yeah, being what, implemented in other of what, areas. Yeah, example of what they've been working on. So this iteration of the program, again, changes were made in 2021. And so we have, um, we are accepting applications sort of on a rolling basis. And OPM has indicated that we'll pretty much review applications on a quarterly schedule. And we started that um, last summer. And so we've only had a, a few rounds of reviewing, but the types of things that have gotten awarded are shared um, animal control officers, shared building and code enforcement, shared um, tax assessment, um, a shared um, firearms training facility um, and programming of that facility. Um, and then we have a couple of others that we are reviewing now. So uh, many of them have been, you know, around sort of staffing How, how are these being funded? Are they being passed through uh, eventually to assessments to towns? The, the COG takes it on year one and then slowly we see the increase in our assessments over time. So I, m most of them are structured that there'll be a fee service. Um, however, in setting them up, uh, different COGs appear to be taking some slightly different approaches, some of them using their, their RSG funding to contribute towards the establishment. Um, certainly, their staff time is funded by that. But it, there, are, there are no parameters in the statute regarding how the COG should pay for this or ha take it on as a self-sustaining program. I think the presumption is that it becomes a sort of fee for service that municipalities are paying for. So we part of um, inviting Rebecca, and then we're going to hear from Amanda Kennedy at the Southeast Council of Governments is because I know around the table there had been interest in understanding how we could um, help some of the towns share services such as, you know, tax assessor, um, building, you know, uh, there are some other positions that um, towns were interested in understanding how we could, could share. So um, Rebecca, you know, this is one way. Um, so we, we asked Rebecca to come and then if there are any other questions with Rebecca, that's fine. But uh, we also have Amanda on um, the executive director of the Southeast COG to tell about uh, a program they've been working on as a shared um, personnel, so. This one, yeah. sorry. That. So let's go ahead to Amanda. So we can kind of give an example. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you all. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the grant that we got and the services we provided, but also give a little preamble on um, our history with shared services. We've been providing in-house planners um, who work as, as municipal planners in probably six towns for quite a few years. And that's worked really well. I think it gives a better product to the town and a better working environment for what would otherwise be lonely part-time planners. Um, we also do special projects. You know, we assist with plans of conservation development. We do GIS projects. Um, and then we've also over the, the past years contracted with independent consultants um, who are then available to the towns, including a building official we had on a uh, contract for about a year. Um, and we've had requests over the years for other services, but we could, couldn't really get a critical mass to be able to hire a, a staff person to provide that service. Um, and this RPIP grant really was the incentive um, to, to pull together. 
Um, we did get a grant back in 2018 that specifically looked at opportunities for shared services. Um, that was an RPIP grant. And um, the recommendations that came out of that project was to continue and expand our municipal planning program um, that there were opportunities on tax assessment to use common um, common assessors or for one town to contract with a second town to provide that service to share back office operations. And they looked at an efficiency of at least 10,000 parcels for a tax assessment program as a good guideline. They also recommended taking a regional approach to marketing recreation opportunities and departments. Um, some combining of HR functions. And uh, I think that was a successful program, but you know that was 2018 and uh, it didn't immediately yield anything that we could act on. So in 2022, our, our on-contract building official um, had a medical issue and was no longer available. And we had a couple of towns also scrambling um, to find building officials. So we applied for an RPIP grant that would fund a full-time staff person working for the COG um, to provide building official services for four towns um, and also to fund uh, half of a person who would be doing zoning enforcement work. So that was something that had been requested and we'd done a little bit of, of zoning enforcement with our planning staff in the past. We got that those grants, uh, that grant um, and it took us quite a while to find a building official um, you all know how difficult it is to find um, that that skill right now. Um, our zoning enforcement officer started probably November or December of last year. Our building officials been working now for about two months, um, and it has been it has been challenging. Um, we got the grant, and then we kind of went go, and then we thought through all the logistics of how this would actually work. So some uh, some notes for you as you consider potentially going down the road on shared services for any of these um, any of these roles. Uh, if you've got a single staff person who works potentially for the COG or for one of the towns working in multiple towns, who's supervising them in all of those cases? Um, how are they interacting with other municipal employees? How does their work fit into kind of the administrative structure of, of each of the towns they work on and, and where does that get thought through um, in advance? The model that we're using is that the, the towns that are using the services, we're billing them hourly. So they gave us an estimate of how many hours per month they would be looking for. And we built the grant budget with that amount. Um, but that changes, you know, things change. Maybe they need less time, maybe they need more. So how do you um, how do you work through that so that all of the towns are getting the support that they need um, with potentially a single staff person? And then you also have to make sure that you're preserving the the grant to be available for the length of time that you expected it to be, which for us is is three years. I think it, for everyone, basically, it's three years. Um, what else? Um, oh, and and things like uh, if you have a a staff person at the Cog. Who needs to go out to mul multiple towns that there's mileage involved in that because that staff person needs to be compensated for travel that can be that can be a an added expense that um you wouldn't otherwise have and then what else did i want to mention um so the way that we structured our grant is the the towns are being billed as i said the first year they're paying 25 percent of the staff person's cost, um, full cost of mileage. Um, and then that will ramp up every year that they stay in the program. Second year will be 50%, third year it'll be 75. Um, and then that they will be kind of acclimated to yeah. take on that full 100% cost in the fourth year. Again, one town might drop out, another town might wanna join. So thinking about how how you preserve the grant funds for the for the towns that were part of the initial commitment um, is a consideration. So right now uh, we have one full time building official working in four towns, um, and one zoning enforcement officer. I think she also works in four towns. Um, she, half of her time is spent on other cog business too. So it's nice with the planners and the zoning enforcement. They can flex their time to other programs because their skills are you know. 
they can they can work on a planning transportation planning grant or they can do municipal planning with some of these other specialties it's a little hard to figure out how to use them if their hours aren't fully allocated to a town so questions happy to answer uh, i have a question so the people that are um working for the cause have, is there any experience of how long they stay with the program you said the first building official left after a year but why wouldn't they just go to a town because many towns need a full-time building official? What's the benefit for them working for the cause? Yeah, the benefit, um, there's no particular benefit. Our compensation package needs to be as good or better as a municipality in order for them, them to stay on staff. Mm -hmm. I think the one that we have kind of wanted a challenge. He wanted to have a chance to kind of design his own program. Um, mm -hmm. Any, I think, yeah, and so, but there isn't any particular benefit. Uh, for our planners, I think it is a really good experience to have co multiple coworkers that are doing the same work. That's that's great. Yeah, if I could just add, in theory, a, a building official, just from my perspective, may find benefit if he's not, he or she is not completely uh, engulfed in local politics in one town, but then again, um does that is that compounded by multiple towns you know i, I just from my experience i've just seen so many times uh, it's a difficult job nonetheless because of the demands placed on a building official with the amount of work that's necessary inspections uh working with so many different contractors uh some are good some aren't so good um but uh it's already a difficult job and it's made a lot worse sometimes when the politics get so heavy that they're pressured to try to um uh, you know, disseminate the building code uh, in in the environment of a, you know, uh, where a lot of people know each other very well. So, but that would be, that would be the only advantage I could think of that unless the package, the benefit package and the pay is better. Doug, you had a question? Yeah, I guess um, I'm a little concerned about um, regionalization where we have the um, staff in a central location and then um, metered out um you know from from the standpoint of differences in differences in municipalities and uh the, the mileage and the travel that you talked about um what about um working with the towns to help towns share the your existing staff you know i mean i in as assessors i could you know maybe we're, we're not really super utilized but if we added an additional uh, assistant we might have the ability to um do some work for some other towns um I, you know i, I think that approach might be um, more amenable to, to us to, to look at uh, some of the um, towns and, and facilitate cooperation amongst you know groups of towns. Well, it, it just from our experience, we share a, a building official. Uh, we share a tax collector. Uh, we share uh, our uh, fire marshal. Uh, it's just, yeah, we do the same here in Goshen for about three or four. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, it does lead to efficiencies. And it also allows somebody that could not get a working wage mm -hmm. to uh, develop one right. by working for multiple communities. Uh, so that in that, helps us retain people yeah. that we otherwise would not be able to retain. And we've done it recently with the animal control in the neighboring community, but I'm looking at our zoning enforcement officer, you know, it, I believe is really underutilized, but there might be other communities that, and I don't know if a grant could be used for the COG to help facilitate some of these marriages, if you will. Mm -hmm. I, I think, um, well, Rebecca or Amanda, you might have um, something to say about that, but I just know that um, there are other COGS doing similar types of things with the regional performance money, um, and there are other models. Uh, you know, the the employee can either sit at the COG to work and you know go out to the communities. There's models where um, an employee or one town will be a hub town, like you're suggesting, and then you know there would be a shared approach. There's also a model where towns um, group into a district, like a health district, and um, you know there's an employee that works for the the district, if you will. So 
there's other ways to do it. The money that um, comes from this grant program is a way to help have the cloud help fund that effort. Okay, I think the principal areas that you might consider doing it is in GIS because GIS is a service that is very technical. Uh, it requires somebody to be doing it every day. And uh, uh, that's something that multiple departments in the town can use GIS data uh, efficiently. But quite frankly, uh, you know, bringing somebody in to do four hours a week of GIS data for our town, they, they'd never get proficient <laughs> enough in the program mm -hmm. to really be of any value. Uh, we saw that. I think the easiest implementation for towns like the majority of ours that are what I call one horse towns is building official because everybody knows you have your, we have a one full time guy. And when he goes on vacation, you know, it's a difficult challenge to get through. But if we all shared and, and created a bank of hours to have somebody to sub in, mm -hmm. you know, and you could either do it on a fee basis or a wash where, look, you want to pay in, you get hours back out, but you you start scheduling this a little bit better so that you know when, uh, you know, with a calendar, not too hard to do. Our guy goes on vacation, we get hours. You know, the next week, somebody in, Litchfield mm -hmm. is on vacation. They need inspections. They've got hours. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't Definitely take indeed. away from your autonomy. It just provides you a sub. And the code is the code. So <laughs> I, I don't buy into the premise that, you know, and maybe some people are pressured on officials, but the code is the code is the code. And it doesn't matter. One official comes into town. They look at a building and does the inspection, develops the ticket, and the contractor moves on. You know, these contractors are trying as hard enough to you know, make progress and then you have somebody go on vacation and, you know, what do you do? You're scrambling. I'm calling Don, I'm calling everybody else trying to get, you know, mm -hmm. things because these days you're, you're really challenged to keep with all the supply chain issues that seem to slow things down. You want to keep this process. The last thing you want to add is your town being the, the choke point for construction for your local contractors are trying to make a buck. So I, I pay it on that level. Uh, I think one of the things we have to address is benefits because if you're going to keep good people and it's not just going to be retirees or a second income, you need to provide benefits. The way to do that isn't poor town sharing somebody because who's going to provide the benefits? I can do that. So if you do something through the cob for building a page over or assessment or whatever, that person can get benefits and you're going to have a better chance of retaining good people. Then, you know, we had a couple of building inspectors who stayed with us for a year and then they found a full time job so they could get the benefits and all of that. And now we have a great building inspector, but he's going to retire in a year or two and he doesn't need the benefits, but he can be part time. So I think as we look at positions, having the ability to have the COG hire somebody who's going to be full time among several towns gives you the benefit of getting better people and having them maybe better chance of having them stay for more than. A year or less. Well, I, I would counter that with uh, we we did that by with the animal control officer by um, regionalizing with the next town. We kept the benefits. So without without re regionalization, the the board were looking to cut the hours and eliminate the benefits. So it could go both ways. I think whether you do it with the cog or you know you, you work with the town to say you know now there's enough hours um, they can retain the benefits and um, you know the, the funds we're getting from the neighboring town um, covers the benefits. So, so I think either way could, could, could address that. Does the COG have the capability to provide benefit packages if there were shared services? Like that grant. Like, well, the grant would help with the, I mean, Rob, you can take this too. The grant would help initially. Yeah, I I'm sorry, I didn't, I, didn't hear the, I didn't hear the question fully. Um, asking whether or not the COG has the ability to provide the benefits for an employee um, under you know under this program where yeah, the salary is paid. Cog employee, full time cog employee. Right. You pay if you do any other full time cog employee, and then you do pay for service. The employment so cost of the employment now for ten or twenty hours a week. So it be a straight cog employee. Yeah, yeah, it would be. It would be very yeah. similar to uh, when we do a fee for service arrangement for you know planning or affordable housing plans. It'd be a cog employee basically operating kind of as a circuit rider, depending on who's contracted. That's the way we envision it anyway. And again, this is really just a, 
um, you know, let, let's get the discussion rolling. Let's see who's interested, what towns are interested as far as uh, the need for services, uh, whether that be temporary as, as, uh, as uh, I think, I believe Dan Jerem had mentioned uh, or in any other arrangement. So it, it's, it's just, let, let's, uh, let's look at and, and see what needs we have to see if we have enough of a critical mass to, uh, to basically apply for one of these grants. And we obviously have to think long-term over the four years uh, in transitioning that, uh, but it's the grants really just to kind of get yourselves a jump start in anywhere that uh, that you see a need. And and frankly, of all the possibilities, GIS, uh, finance, I mean, sorry, not finance, uh, assessment, uh, building, uh, or whatever, uh, it seems as though the building official, maybe the assessor, would be the easiest ones to kind of enter into uh, before we start looking at expanding beyond that. So. Rebecca can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but um, these grants are. They, they won't really go away. I mean, um, subject to the legislature, I guess, but they've been around for quite some time. Um, they, they're kind of a rolling basis, um, although there's a couple of uh, two or three points throughout the year when um, OPM collects the applications for the grants. The next one coming up is August, but um, you know we were talking about this conversation, like Rob said, being a starting point and seeing if there's anybody who, you know, you could email Rob or me who would want to, Form a, um, a group to, to continue to talk about how um, we we might do this or if we might might do this um, type of application to OPM for one of these grants. I think um, we want to make sure that um, what when and if we do this, um, you know, the towns that we have um, going in with us are um, interested in staying <laughs> staying on it um, because you know as as uh, Amanda mentioned, you can. Um, have towns come in and out, it, it can, can challenge the program, so. But if you took about it, I'm sure that Torrington has one than one building official. Yeah. I would hazard a guess that maybe Winchester is on that edge if they don't have mm -hmm. two. But if all the remaining towns were into buying two weeks of service, so just to cover vacation time, you know, you you there with the, with the 19 towns, call it 38 weeks, would be obligated at, at that much cost instead of making the phone calls if you could really get into a calendar situation. And I'm sure there would be some competition for weeks, but they can do work. And I think it's, you know, the conversation is good because it's, it's either you hire or you go to the pool of the towns that have the resources and, and contract them out. And I think that uh, you know, I think that that's something that should be explored, not just thinking we're going to hire them through the cog, but uh, you know, and maybe that's the end result. But I think uh, looking at the towns that do have, instead of trying to pinch each other's um, employees, right. we uh, we uh, share them. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of that already going on. I'd yeah. love to see what that looks like just from a chair. Even the ones that are sharing have problems when it's time for a summer vacation. Maybe they're not on vacation. Just kind of. They only work two days. It's Saturday and Sunday. It may be a good idea of knowing about some share services of sending a quick note to Emily and telling them which services we share, who we share them with. Or, or, or maybe we might have some capacity to share. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'm looking at the zoning, and I don't put them on the spot right now. But uh, you know, zoning enforcement, to, I think, is uh, definitely something that we value in town. But we, uh, we, we could share that. Yeah. Right. It's not just sharing; it's for as part time because you might have a part time person who you don't share with another town who might be interested in working. Yeah. Four hours. So, what what part time people do you have? You might. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if only we can find someone who is trained in uh, sure. animal control, building, and so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no brainer. But we also share in building and Spencer. So Let's uh, go on, uh, if we may, and. Uh, uh, is Mike on the on the horn here? I don't see him. 
<laughs> so I I, uh, I checked my emails a few a little bit ago, and Mike had said that he had a conflict with a union uh, a union issue in town. He he would have logged in uh, remotely if he could have. Um, I did send him a link so he could be a presenter, but I don't know that he saw the email. So this well, that puts us back on schedule. <laughs> So, uh, skipping Mike, let's go to Emily. Sure. Uh, economic development update. So, we are um, the EDC executive committee has continued to meet uh, a bit more to plan for. We're going to have a full economic development commission meeting on May 16th. Um, and that meeting will be to prepare for um, these public engagement meetings, which I keep talking about, but they are actually going to happen. Um, we have made some progress in that we are in the process of contracting with Mark Waterhouse. Um, he has Garnet um, Consulting um, Group. Uh, it's just him, but he's done a lot of work in this region. He's very knowledgeable um, on economic development. That's his, his, his field. But he's also an excellent facilitator. So he's going to be helping us craft and facilitate the public engagement sessions for the upcoming SEDS update. Um, and those, um, been speaking with Mark a little bit this week, we think just to kind of flag it, um, we're gonna have two engagement sessions. I think the first one is gonna fall somewhere around the, the week of June 19th. And the second one, um, probably in the week of um, July 10th. Um, I know it can be Sometimes challenging to have public meetings in the summer, but we feel like um, we really want to move forward and uh, maybe we don't have to block out the whole summer as a blackout for public meetings. So if we get those on people's calendars, we are also intending to have some good um, virtual engagement. So if people aren't actually in town, they can still have input. We are contracting with the Connecticut Data Collaborative to have a refresh of our economic data and data in other categories as well. Um, some of the things that we're going to be getting from them are a refresh on industry mix, number of jobs in the region, um, size of businesses, recent population changes, journey to work kind of information. Um, and all of that data is going to be broken down town by town as well as at a, at a regional and then compared to the state and the nation. So you'll all hopefully have some new data too for your towns in these areas. Um, and that will inform the conversation that we have at these public meetings. And then um, we are also going to be contracting with the um, Northwest Connecticut Arts Council and Civic Lift to refresh the Discover Litchfield Hills website and social media. Um, it's kind of been laying dormant a bit for the last year, so we really need to breathe some new life back into that. And then um, we are probably going to be contracting with someone to do some marketing of the region as a whole. And so that will be kind of elevating and lifting up Discover Litchfield Hills, as well as just helping us think through, um, you know, how to elevate the region, its businesses, and um, in general, going forward with the said. So um, kind of tangentially to that, um, we are, there's some money left in our um, COG budget for um, consulting contingency for this fiscal year. And we're looking to use, uh, utilize that um, small amount to do a refresh of the COG website. So you might be seeing some changes coming through with that. And we may um, ask for some input on, on you know, what the most important things are um, with that as a resource for you. So that is my update. Very good. Any questions? Casey? Hello. Um, I just wanted to uh, let you know um, that the Unified Planning Work Program has been approved by uh, Federal Highway Administration along with the Federal Transit Administration, and basically that's a plan that's a, a two-year um, plan for us to carry out our transportation initiatives here at the Northwest Hills Council of Governments. And so since we've already received that federal approval, we're just asking the policy board to um, have Henry, um, our chairman, sign off on it as a formal solution approving this two-year document. Does anybody have any objection to me signing that? No, the only thing I noted is that the, I think the year is wrong. Uh, no, the, the signing, the date he's signing it. That was oh. the only thing I noticed. That was yes, it is. 22. It should be 2023. So that change, uh, hearing no objection, I'll sign it. Uh, do, yeah, I guess I need a motion uh, to. I'll make that one. 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's just a tip amendment. Um, it's a statewide project um, that, that had proposed for uh, service plazas, um, signage, and support replacement along the I 95, I 395 corridor. Um, just due to the fact that it is a statewide project, they're asking more to actually do this. So, if you have any questions or concerns. Uh, so, does that need a vote yes. to endorse it? Uh, is there a vote? So, move. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any abstaining? Okay. Uh, question for any update on the trip trips program? Well, the last we heard, um, and I don't know if Grayson can add more to it, but on the last of the information that Grayson had shared that they're going to trip, hopefully by the end of the summer, we need a few purity further. I have to the coordinator to go. Yeah. Take a question. We'll put it in. We have set a date. So when will be a response to the submittals from the pond? They said no deal was set. It's a new program. Um, not exactly on the application. So we'll be getting at this point. We have no set date. But did they say they were aiming for the end of the summer? Yeah, you're looking at maybe if uh the end of the summer would respond. But I put not pin and on as to an exact date. So it's much sooner. Maybe you can just that. Any other questions? Uh, can we move on to John Fields? John. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, apologize for not being there. I had every plan to do so, but uh, allergies are kicking my butt. So um, actually, I didn't, and I got a little cold, home, so I don't want to share it with you guys. Um, just a couple of things. We got some, we got a new member to our office staff, uh, Mintoy Stewart. If you uh, receive an email for from her, it is legit. <laughs> so uh, we're going to try to get Mintoy more involved in uh, collecting of data and EMPG especially, she's going to uh, take that over for Hank and uh, allow him, free him up to do more plan reviews and stuff like that. We continue. Uh, you just got some information in regards to uh, small business association uh, loans available through the drought. Um, these came out, I think, last year, but the deadline's coming forward. So you should have got a couple um, informational emails in regards to SBA loans that are available for Litchfield County and Fairfield County. I believe it was. And then I think one of them was available for New Haven County too. Um, we're also continuing to work on the migrant planning. Obviously you all know today is the end of the COVID uh, stuff and Title 42 and all that kind of stuff. So we continue, we have a uh, migrant plan in place and uh, we're prepared as much as we possibly can to uh, accept migrants as they come into your municipalities and work their way up through the state. Also uh, doing some diversion planning with the state DOT. Some of you have been involved in that. Um, Route 8, Route 8, uh, I-84, um, they're doing, uh, we finished Route 8. Now we're working on I-84. I'm working with the consultant and DOT and your municipality um, representatives uh, on that diversion planning. The big thing with that was uh, the question came up, where can we find that? Uh, because these these obviously do affect your municipalities in specific ways. So um, some of your municipalities. And uh, basically, uh, there was no, uh, the last time I think it was updated was maybe 2011. So these things are like 10 years old. It might even be older than that. I, I can't recall. But uh, there was no nowhere to find these uh, plans. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is once this is all completed by the consultant working for DOT, we're going to make them available through Web EOC. So everyone has access to see if they do close on a highway um, in certain areas, how it affects your municipality if it does. Um, we also have uh, some, uh, been having some discussions. I facilitated some discussions, especially for you true B towns um, up there uh, regards to communications. Um, our CTS folks, and I think it's the Connecticut Land, uh, I don't know, clan, uh, some 
In regards to communication and getting on the state network for communication, I know like Norfolk, uh, Bar Campstead, um, and it looks like Winstead and a bunch of other towns up in the Troop B area, we're hoping to get on the 800 megahertz. They actually, some of those municipalities through fire departments got grants actually to buy radios and and upgrade their radio system to uh, hop on to the 800 megahertz state system. And the state has been nicely advertising that you could do that. Well, we found out very quickly that um, Troop B uh, towns um, up in that particular area, they're concerned about uh, overloading uh, the capacity of that system up there because uh, there's no plans to build it out. It's a smaller system. So they are working out a game plan with um, CTS, our, our um, communication folks here at the state level, to try to come up. And, and basically what it is, guys, that you know, each of these municipalities were coming in would request for specific talk groups and multiple <clears throat> talk And um, so, um, you know, obviously the uh, folks in our communication network at the top that oversee this became very concerned on the capacity and, um, you know, because Troop B is a smaller capacity system. So um, we're coming up with a game plan, trying to figure out, you know, how many, um, it looks like each one of the municipalities will get one talk group and then we can jump on to LCDs, multiple talk groups they have. So it's, I'm, I'm not a big radio guy, but um, we're trying to work out those details. And I know, especially in Norfolk, Matt and, his folks up there uh, were, were, were a little, uh, had a little angst in regards to the state advertising, come on on board, and they're trying to come on board, and now they're saying, ho, 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 not so fast, you know, type thing. So I know um, Matt Lovick, the fire chief, was very adamant in the last symposium, and uh, we're trying to work that out with them guys. So, you know, all, and it includes a bunch of different uh, uh, municipalities up there. Uh, we continue to do school assessment exercises. Uh, we, we just finished an exercise in Bethel for the school system at the high school. We're doing an assessment in Washington over at the Monastery School. Uh, so we continue to work through those things. There's a senior officials uh, workshop, workshop coming up. This is very similar to one we held in uh, at the Litchfield Inn a few months back, um, which was a shorter program. This is the full day program that's being held at Western Connecticut State University. So if you have any uh, municipal representatives that want to be there, um, it's actually an excellent program, um, but uh, it is a full day, unfortunately. But uh, we also had the flood workshop that will be held in Kent, at Kent School that will be coming up on the uh, 21st of June. Um, so we'll continue uh, to advertise that. I think currently we have like 25 people that are registered for that. Um, and then, um, we are in the process of working with Massachusetts. So you uh, towns that um, border Massachusetts right now, we've created a survey and you probably got it yesterday, I think day before. I also included your fire chiefs. And if I was familiar with the EMS folks, I included them, uh, but we sent it right to the emergency management directors. We're looking at um, a cross border mutual aid. Um, it came up during uh, our meetings with uh, the folks in Massachusetts, and there was concern uh, how every day, and I'll, I'll, I'll use uh, Charlie and North Canaan, every day um, the fire department EMS are crossing borders and doing stuff on uh, the Massachusetts line as well as the state line. And what's the liability associated with that? Right now, and we're trying to do this, uh, I will be honest with you, trying to do it very quietly because it's working um, and nothing, you know, right now it's working. So we don't want to interfere with that. But we also want to make sure that if something was to happen from a liability perspective, we would know who's responsible for what. And I think it's important for you guys to have that and understand that, you know. And I know some municipalities do have mutual aid agreements, but they're probably pretty old. But we're looking at existing, existing systems that help us. So we, we developed a survey. We're sending it out to all the border towns. Uh, so that's what you got yesterday. Um, so please encourage your uh, emergency response folks to fill that out so that we can, uh, you know, we can get uh, a good feel for what's going on, what already exists, and uh, try to create something to uh, cover liability when people are crossing borders. And we're going to probably do the same thing. We have a meeting with New York coming up.
uh, pretty quick here. So we'll be doing it also in New York. So you'll probably at some point know someone like Charlie. I think it's Charlie. Charlie, you border New York too, I think. I yes, we do. Yeah, so so you'll probably get a survey for New York too. So you get in bold. But we're trying to just make sure from a liability perspective, uh, everything's covered effectively. And again, trying to do this without interrupting the operations that are happening right now because it's working. Whatever you guys are doing, it's working. But uh, we want to make sure uh, that you're covered from a liability perspective. So I, th I believe that's all I have. Uh, and pending any questions. Yeah, that's all I have. Any questions? John, when was that flood workshop? June 1st. Uh, June 21st, Don. And it's going to be at the Kent School. It's in their auditorium. So. Okay. I just have one quick question, John. Um, yes, sir. EP, the EPMG, do you, do you know, do you expect when that might be, the next one might be coming out for? Uh, no, so that should be coming out pretty quick here. Um, you know, I didn't talk too much about the grants, but uh, EMPG uh, 2023 should be coming out pretty quick here, Reb. I would imagine, you know, August, July, August, somewhere in there. You know, okay. but uh, also HSGP, I should touch on that too. Homeland Security Grant Funding. You know, uh, Sarah and uh, Rob have been working very diligently on this, and they've they've done kudos work. Uh, you know, um, with this particular grant program. The new 2023 grant program is going to be coming out, and it looks like there'll be additional, uh, I think it's right around $6,000 available to the uh, region for uh, the Homeland Security grant. I think there's an additional six grand in there or something now. So, but, uh, and then there's some other savings, but we'll talk about that in the future because uh, the IMT's got some set aside money now too. So there won't be as much taken out for the IMT benefit. So. Thanks, John. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, sir. Thanks, John. Uh, let's go on to the municipal forum. Who wants to start? I'll start. We'll go around the table. How's that? Uh, just a couple of things for the uh, uh, Falls Village, town of Canaan, is uh, we got the NRES uh, grant from Eversource, which allows us to put in a solar farm on the town farm and uh, that will um, be sufficient to supply electricity for all the government buildings in town and uh, uh, cost us a little bit of money and to pay it off it'll take us I guess about six six and a half years to pay it off but then it's good for 25 so uh, it, it, it'll save our town over a period of time, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, uh, I don't know, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000 over a 25-year period, which is not jump change. I mean, it's a, effective. Uh, we're selling our old firehouse. We're going through a very lengthy process. Uh, emulating the process that uh, was done by uh, Salisbury um, using its, even the same law firm <laughs> to uh, do it. Uh, and uh, uh, we hope to have that process completed and finalized and sold by September. Um, and uh, the final thing is our town rejected, our board of finance rejected uh, the uh, taking out uh, uh, any money for fiber and refused to send it to a town meeting. I think they were afraid of my pass. <laughs> and uh, so that was that. And the final thing is that we're jointly working uh, on a composting facility with, uh, I guess, you and uh, North Carolina. And we're trying to uh, get Maria to uh, interject herself into the, we have a somebody applying in our town to do a composting facility in the floor of a quarry, uh, which doesn't have a lot of wildlife in it since it's an active quarry. Uh, and uh, 
the final thing that the state wants us to do is a wildlife uh, study to make sure it's not affecting any wildlife or well, there's very little wildlife in the bottom of the quarry. So, um, you know, we're, we're trying to work through that and uh, then we might have a composting facility in the town of in the town of Canaan, in which I think could benefit other towns that wanted to use it. So uh, that's it. Come next. You're next. Okay. So we had our town meeting about a week ago. We had 50 people show up, which surprised we had that many there. And it passed without any dissenting votes or any questions. We written taxes went up about a half a mil. We had tax decrease last year, so it's pretty flat. But there was not a single question from the audience. Never happened. Uh, Frontier, all the conversations I've had with them, they've been a bit small, but about 50 houses in town, which is about 3%. So they're pretty well wired throughout the town. They haven't done any of the underground yet. I don't know when they're going to do that. But that's something they're moving very slowly on, but they're skipping three subdivisions in that 50 houses, which are all underground and they're all subdivisions you would think would be appropriate for them to run fiber, but lots of conversations and you don't get the same answer every time you talk to them. So um, I got two steep grants we're trying to execute. One is the Department of Health to extend water lines from Winstead. And I have to admit, I haven't dealt with the Department of Public Health directly before Gene. <laughs> but it is the most challenging grant I've ever seen for all of their rules and requirements and regulations. And we have a second grant to repair the river bank on the uh, Farmington River or prevent it from caving. So we're dealing with deep in the Army Corps of Engineers there. And that's almost a challenge. Uh, they discovered there are mussels in the river. There's a fish called a slimy sculpin. So now we have to hire somebody to go into the snorkel and figure out where they are and how many there are and how do we remediate that and we can only go in the river a certain time of year so we have like a two-week window in the next year to do everything so those those have been interesting sometimes you wonder whether it's worth getting the money or not but in any case and then dan jeremy and i have been working on our town beach that we share we're going to take down about 50 pine trees that are past their prime and the MDC is paying for that, luckily, because it's MDC land, so we're not paying for it. But when people go to the beach on June 10th to get their stickers and they see all those trees going, they're making some phone calls to the two town hall. I was going to say public messaging. <laughs> like, no. Don't underestimate public messaging. How do you spell slimy sculpin? Sculpin. There's a fisheries biologist who does that kind of thing for a living. He'll go in the river and he'll locate mussels and if then they come up with a management plan. Deep has to improve it. No, no, no. Now, in any case, where things are progressing. We have our annual meeting on Monday, and hopefully that'll approve the uh, budget to be sent to the referendum. We're asking for a quarter mil. And that's mostly because the hauler for our trash and transfer station went up 50%. You forgot to let us know about it. And they expect another 10% next year and another 10% the year after. So we're trying to restructure maybe and think of a different plan, a different company. Um, we're looking at all aspects. That was that was a big crushing blow. We're busy spending ARPA money. We are building a, a food bank in our community building which is also a shelter that's worked really well we're almost done with that um we've been working wonderfully with eversource they've been trimming trees uh, they had a program for west heartland and east heartland uh, to trim the trees on the line and they've actually been helping us a little bit in some of the trees that we're trying to try and take down we've spent almost a hundred thousand dollars this year on ash trees and other dead trees it's killing me however they ran out of money um, a quarter of the program in West Harlem. They haven't even moved to West East Harlem, so they'll maybe try and look at that again next year. Other than that, I was very disappointed about the bear legislation because we really are overrun more so than usual. We have a lot of bears in Harlem. They're everywhere now. They're in the chicken coops. Um, big problems there. 
that and the early voting, that was a big surprise, 14 days. Not only does that hurt us financially, but we have part-time registrars, registrars that have other jobs and other duties. And I'm worried that they're gonna get burnt out. There's, there's two days a week that are 12 hour days that's through the weekend. How do you secure the building? How do you do anything of that? I, I, I'm really surprised at the state that just looked at the 14. What about us small towns? A lot of small towns in Connecticut. We don't really seem to get our duty. That's all my complaining. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> I was on a call this morning with Secretary of State, and she didn't want it to be 14 days. She wanted it to be a shorter window of time. I did. But I guess the, the vote went out for 14 days. So maybe that could be changed going forward. Um, tonight, you all, are you all done that? I'm yeah. good. Okay, so Litchfield, um, we have our town meeting tonight for our budget. We are um, going up 1.5% total, but that also is going to reflect a decrease of mill rate by 0.1. It's our fourth year in a row being able to do that. So I'm grateful. I think a lot of it's because of our debt service falling off. So we uh, dropped $600,000 with that. Um, I'm still uh, working with the hotel to close at the courthouse. It's a boutique hotel with 20 rooms. Um, they've had a couple um, uh, issues with their lender because of parking. They want a dedicated parking. Um, I can't give away 20 parking and parking spots in a municipal parking lot that's already sometimes overrun. So uh, it's sensitive, but we're hoping to get it to the finish line. Um, they're, and they're also committing $15 million to the project, which is huge for, for the town. Um, Frontier and Optimum are uh, rolling out fiber right now. And they're doing a good job, but uh, they are leaving lots of uh, remnants of their wires and their their twists and the cigarette butts. So I, I'm getting a lot of complaints about that, especially after Earth Day. There was a, a huge overrun of, of even the volunteers saying there's so much of that all over the place. And, and now that they're also digging underneath, they're not putting the ground back to as it was, especially on some of that, those rainy times. So we're just having issues that they're outsourced. It's not actually sometimes optimum people. It's people from other states. So that's taken up some a lot of my time. Um, tonight at the town meeting, we are going to vote on the WPCA, our water pollution control uh, solar project, which will save uh, the town 35,000 a year, potentially. Um, there are some people who believe that um, instead of having another company run it, that maybe the town should be the ones to hold the project, pay for the project, like you're doing it and, and reap the benefit over time. Um, we're gonna debate that tonight. We'll see how that goes. I, I'm not, that can go either way. Uh, we've added food waste diversion to all of our three schools. So currently, and we have a we already have a food composting program at our recycling center for about a year and a half now, probably two years now. And um, we're taking out about weekly about 15 to 25 gallon buckets of food waste from the three schools and our public works goes and picks it up twice a week and bring it and brings it to the recycling center. Um, I'm working at our town beach with the Bantam Lake watershed uh, group. There is grant money out there that are trying to remediate some of what they believe is the runoff from different areas that pollutes Phantom Lake. Um, you know, I think Goshen is part of the conversation too to kind of remedy, um, you know, the, the nitrogen and, and phosphorus that are going in to, to make uh, Phantom Lake um, just overrun with weeds and that, uh, not the milk oil, but blue the, the blue green algae, which is a huge issue. And if we really want to make a dent in that project, I mean, really, that's a million dollar band aid, even to, you know, to get it to be where it's going to be. Uh, you know, usable uh, and not um, not by July and August be where you can't use the water, you know, where you can't swim. So we're hoping to bring the state more farther in and deep, uh, closer into work with us because right now they've really been hands off, in my opinion. Um, so Tom and I and Frank will be working on that move with Ocean too. And then lastly, um, I combined our Park and Rec and Human Services because we were having issues of, you know, having having one person in social services, and when she had to go out, it wasn't um, it wasn't manned as well. So we just recently hired the last person for a three department um, umbrella, which I think is going to work better than it has in the past. So that's it for Lichfield. Thank you. Yeah, and early indications on Dam Lake for the blue green algae, they're already starting to see it forming this early in the year, which is a huge issue. Because normally it doesn't form until later, so it was a warm winter. It could be up to three treatments with, uh, to try to 
take care of it. <laughs> Very expensive. Uh, May 1st, Region 6 passed the about a $21 million budget with 44 people voting yes and two no. It just astounds me that for $21, $22 million to get 46 people out. But we had our budget hearing last night. We had 15 people there and uh, it lasted about 17 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. Our vote should be on the 24th, I hope. Uh, where the municipal budget went down $122,000. The school budget, our share went up $282,000. So we're up slightly on our overall budget, but we're looking to decrease our mill rate from 23.99 to 18.4, because we had the reval, which on average went up 31% uh, on the appraisals. Also uh, looking to approve a culvert replacement. We did apply for uh, the local bridge. Of course, everyone knows that it was very limited this year, but we're looking to get that culvert replaced for less than what we would have paid through the local bridge program. Um, in conjunction with that, we have a state grant on that same road as East Shore Road near Bantam Lake. Uh, so we're hoping to have the culvert replaced and then pave the entire road. Uh, so hopefully never won't touch the road again for a number of years. Uh, town center improvement project met with DOT yesterday, looking to realign the intersection of Route 109 and uh, Route 61 Center Morris. It's been an issue for many, many years. Uh, DOT has come out with some very nice plans. It does include sidewalks, which we don't have in Morris. Uh, so we'll be dealing with that in the future. It's a big change for a small town. But again, this with DOT is probably out three to four years, and they will take care of all the costs of this realignment. That's all. I called them right after it went to the paper. It's like, how could he get it? Yeah. We don't, we've been working on it for years. So we'll come yeah. to Litchfield next. It's it. <laughs> well, when I first started campaigning back in uh, 2015, that was one of my points I wanted to see yeah. was this realignment. Here we are. Six years. Seven, and it's still four years, years yeah. out, and yeah. I probably won't be here. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sounds exciting. Yeah. Uh, North Kane, we got our budget meeting coming up uh, May 31st to vote on our town vote on it. Uh, we had a couple of hearings. Uh, we didn't get many people at it like Morris did. Uh, just a couple of comments. Why are we giving fire company more money in the ambulance? You know, uh, but nothing on anything else on serious. So we answered those and there was no others. And so we're gonna be voting on our budget May 31st and it's up pretty good. So I thought I'd go out with a big bang with a high budget and get it approved, <laughs> and, uh, which I think I'll work. Uh, that's it, <laughs> my last budget. Uh, we're looking to lower the mill rate. We had a real good rebound um, this last year. So we're looking to get the mill rate down at least to 29. It's up to 31 right now. So it could go lower and we still be ahead of the game. So. Like I say, I hope I go out with a bang with that. Um, the movie theater finally got sold in the center of town, the old Colonial Theater, which is a big plus for 325000 Two for four people from Salisbury Lakeville bought it. And um, there's some kind of a meeting I got to go to uh, Saturday night to see what their plans of it. So that's really exciting for the town. That in the town really regenerate it. Um, on that. So that's some real good news. Um, on that part, our resident trooper program, we had a town meeting uh, first part of May to get that through because the contract runs ends up. And we had what, uh, 55 people there to vote. And it was a, a good discussion. Um, a lot of people were against it because it went up from 128,000 to 158,000. The people said that we have true B right up here. Naturally, you can always get a trooper when you can call, which is not true because over the years, there's nobody in there. Uh, so it did go through, our resident trooper was there, the lieutenant was there and spoke very highly of it. And it got through, uh, I think it was what, 38 to 17 the vote was. So he's good for another year. Uh, the biggest reason why it went up, our resident trooper last year was only on the force for three months and he was only 128,000. The one we have now has been on the force for nine years and he has a strike. So he's at the top of this troop B or state of Connecticut's pay list. So that's why he went up 30,000. So yesterday, I don't know if you saw today's paper where in the Waterbury, where we had a person that uh, in those bezeling money for 98,000, she made the paper. Well, it happened right in the town hall yesterday. Not yesterday, the day before. 
so uh, she happened to be in the probate court with her brother and a resident trooper was there and knew about her and rushed her right in the front lobby of our town hall. So uh, he was around this thing on that right day. So it was a little excitement at the town hall on that. Is that Lane? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Our ladies kind of went berserk in the town hall. You know, he had a phone call in the afternoon. There's an arrest going on in the town hall. I go, oh, God. You know, oh, Thanks. At least there was nobody in there shooting away or anything, so she was good. But yeah, she was, she, the state trooper asked her, how'd you get here? She said, well, I drove. She said, well, you're not supposed to drive. You don't have a license. Oh, I, okay. Maybe I didn't drive. <laughs> Jeremy, the resident trooper, says, I didn't wake up yesterday. I wasn't born yesterday, you know, and handcuffed her the way she went, and I see it in today's paper, so it was pretty good. So we got his fake, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, one of the big complaints was that he wasn't visible around town and stuff like that. And well, he's out in our missile parking lot between Industrial Bar and Grill and where his brother used to be is municipal parking, but no overnight parking. Well, he brought in 200 bucks in the last two weeks. <laughs> this is a $50 fine. And one person calls, well, we didn't see the signs. Well, there's signs right there, you know. And so, you know, he's always getting some money back and everything. And uh, he's, he's doing well. But, um, Everything else, we have a bear issue. My neighbor took some pictures of it up on their back deck the other day. And uh, that's the thing. On top of McDonald's the other night, there was two of them. I don't know if they were there for supper. <laughs> top of their dumpsters, uh, looking for something to eat at McDonald's. But uh, they're around. <laughs> Not as bad as what Salisbury has in a person's kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> on the whole, uh, we got lost out on a bridge thing on, on the grant money from uh, the local bridge, too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to read it for 2024, you know, it's on that. So we just struggle along. But we get our budget through, we get the mill rate down. We can be <laughs> That's it. Well, in Norfolk, we had our annual town meeting on Monday night. Uh, budget passed with one exception. We mill rate is, is uh, slightly lower than it was last year. Um, one of the things that got tabled from the call of the meeting was um, signing an agreement with Frontier for fiber. Uh, they hadn't provided us with a with a contract that, that we could review. They were looking for $467,000 from the town to uh, build out the whole system to everyone in town. Um, and it, it's right now they've They've run fiber to the majority of the town. In fact, yesterday, one of the residents contacted me to tell me that his home was already hooked up. He got hooked up yesterday. So, which I have a call into them this afternoon to talk to them about what we're going to do in the future. But people were very reluctant in town about providing um, uh, municipal funds to a private entity for um, to run their system. So that was one of the biggest things, biggest issues that people had. Um, our gas bill um, cleanup still goes on. Um, it's been a, a pretty big event in Norfolk. Um, you go through town, they've been, they've had to, we have uh, three or four families that are actually moved out of their homes because of it. Um, doing quite a bit of excavation. Things have del been delayed a few times. Um, there's probably, without exaggeration, 60 roll-off containers at our town farm full of contaminated material that has to be removed. Uh, we're working on one area in town uh, on one of our main roads, Maple Avenue, that our town hall is on, where there's going to be some major uh, excavation and having to rebuild the road because of the contaminated material and get, it getting around all of the uh, stormwater drainage system. So it's, I don't wish this on anybody because it's a daily occurring, daily discussion you have to have with people. So um, a couple of the good things are we have uh, our, our affordable housing development, Haystack Woods. Um, is moving forward at a pretty good clip. The uh, site work is um, uh, getting close to being done. 
we have conversations with uh, the DO or the DOH about uh, when we might start building. It could happen by the end of the end of summer, but uh, uh, that's not positive yet. Our solar project at our landfill, which is five megawatts, uh, the land has been cleared for the additional component of it. Um, we're using all of our our capped landfill, which is about ten acres, and then we. Um, receive permission from our conservation commission and our wetlands and our planning and zoning, along with the DEP, to um, clear three acres, three additional acres to get the maximum of five megawatts. Um, I, I'll, I'll apologize early, anybody going through Norfolk, but next summer they're going to be doing the wall over on the Canaan side of town. Um, so there's going to be one lane of traffic. With a blinking light, with a, with a traffic light to for alternating traffic, uh, the project is about twenty million dollars. Um, it's going to be they're going to completely take that wall out where the barriers are now in front of it. Um, so I, I'm just warning everybody: it's not going to be pleasant going through Norfolk in 2024 and probably into 2025. So uh, other than that. Things are good. Well, oh, nice. we're going to make this short. <laughs> well, we had our final um, board of finance meeting last night. The uh, budget hearing is on the 17th. Um, the uh, town meeting is on the 31st. Like everybody else, our rebounds went up 25 to 30 percent. Um, we had a 219. Um, thousand dollar uh, increase it's amazing it was up to 585 and i saw all, all the capital numbers and I, I i beat up everybody in the department that's so like you don't need that you don't need that you don't need that so i got it down to 219 went from 14 um point two eight down to five point uh, three seven i tell you it's unbelievable how it, it's a difference between need and want so if you don't if you don't need it you know, you're not getting it. So I, uh, I cut that all. So um, our new rate's at 19.8, so I'm gonna try to get it down to 15.8. And um, with the five, even with the 5.37 increase. So hopefully everything goes right um, the 31st. <laughs> um, we, are in, we are looking for a library director. So we just put an ad in the paper. Ours is moving on to she had two degrees, two masters. And one is a librarian, one is a social worker. So she's going to take a job at Thornton with a social worker. <laughs> um, and our data processor payroll clerk is retiring after 26 years. So I got to find somebody before June 28th because nobody's going to get paid. <laughs> so so we, we're, we're moving on that. Uh, we just purchased 13.84 um, acres from Ed Wright and Pete Fay down across the street from the firehouse. It's going to be for a future uh, building to house our um, public works equipment because uh, our bulldozer, our excavator, our loaders sit outside. Our new tractor, the roadside mower tractor sits outside. Our new caboodle we just bought sits outside all winter long. And it's like this stuff's getting inside. I made the move. Every agreed with me. The Board of Finance agreed with me. Um, like Tom says, uh, the budget uh, region six was passed with only forty six people. I had one hundred fourteen people fighting over a two hundred thousand dollar purchase. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. The comments. So well, we got to pass the other night, and it was uh, pretty awesome. So um, I'm applying a uh, board grant to build the building, and hopefully that will. Um, the grants will be available next March, and, and um, Congresswoman John A. says they should, if we get it, it'll be processed in eight weeks. So that'd be awesome. So hopefully, new construction could start next summer if it all happens. Now, this, like um, everybody's talking about this early voting. I don't know what we're going to do next year. We're, we don't have the facilities when we have Camp Dodge, which the rec department runs. I mean, we can't shut, shut down the rec department for 14 days, and we only have the town hall. So um, you can't shut down the town hall for 14 days. So I don't know what we're going to do and how we're going to man it. So, and our elections, you know, small town, our elections run around $10,000 a year. 
So 14 days, I'm figuring $140,000 and I got to go to the taxpayers and say, hey, you got to pay for this because you voted it in. You checked that little box, crazy. So, um, what else? I need a bus driver. <laughs> and um, yeah. grant writing, I tell you, I've been doing the grants. They take a long time. So, you know, hopefully the car gets a grant writer or we're going to have to hire a grant writer. Um, I'm going to contact you about that solar grant because this, this land purchase, um, I want to put a solar array. And there was another thing. The people were wondering about the solar array. It's like, these are the same people that want an EV charger in town, but they don't want the solar panel. I couldn't believe it. So, um, you just not familiar. <laughs> yeah, it is the old yeah. SES. Yeah, so, that's, that's, it. that's how old you are. Younger yeah. yeah. people like it, they see it being progressive. Mm -hmm. That's all from Goshen. So, uh, Burlington, we got the budget through the Board of Finance. So, our budget meeting is coming up. We're looking at a half a mil reduction, 1.5% reduction. We got a revaluation next year. Um, the uh, paid fire chief, um, I don't know if any of you have heard, he's a great friend that we're looking for a paid fire chief, that's been squashed. We've uh, increased stipends instead. So we increased the per call pay and increased the officer's pay. It hasn't been looked at in over 15 years and it, it went over very well, thankfully. So it costs about $85,000, but that's uh, you know, a small price to pay for you know a, a very good volunteer fire department. Um, grant administration, we lost our grant administrator last week. Um, and uh, as I've dug into it um, and worked on it, uh, I think we can work pretty well with it by just improving our accounting, which we've already done. Um, we've made a lot of, of the grant, grant administrator before just basically did what the uh, accounting department should have been doing, um, having the proper documentation and so on. And we're utilizing Cardinal, um, and we'll, we'll see how this goes, but Cardinal um, will be our grant administrator. They already write the grants for us. They do the engineering for us. Uh, we had a meeting with them. And I think it went pretty well that uh, they they can answer the questions about the grant, and then the accounting department just has to step up and make sure that the accounting is done properly. I just put an ARPA schedule together for um, the board of uh, finance and selectmen, and I uh, kudos to the the accounting department. They've really come a long way in um, in pulling things together properly. So uh, that's all from Brown. I could use a grant administrator. I end up doing that stuff myself. <laughs> um, I think we're ahead of most people. Our budgets are done, and uh, we voted our ARPA two phases. So the budget included a, you know, from three to seven, a third question for half of our ARPA money, which is kind of taxing because we're building stuff and it's a lot of projects to just keep running over. So we're doing a basketball court, we're doing a couple of pickleball courts. We got rebound going. We're a little behind some of you folks, but ours will be next year. Um, really had a big hurdle with Pura on our sale of our water and sewer, uh, wrapped up the hearings went pretty well. I know Henry jumped in front of us uh, and got it done pre-COVID, but COVID slowed us down basically two years. So uh, we're waiting for the draft decision up in July, but uh, putting a new roof on town hall. So that's another one. We got two steep grants. So I'm trying to keep up with and get those going. And we've got Frontier, like the rest of you, going through town. And, um, unlike some of the smaller towns, we have that density in New Hartford where they're just not charging us, you know, because that's their threshold. If you get a certain amount of houses per, per mile, they'll do it for you. So uh, we, we fell into that, but, um, you know, really ends up being the good time of year, road work, chip seal, uh, trying to go through that, the phone's ringing off the hook, how about me, how about me, how about me? Uh, and $550,000 doesn't go very far for payment in Hartford. So uh, we did set the mill rate uh, the other night and I was able to convince them to, to move another 125,000 of uh, surplus from the street budget into paying just to keep it rolling. Cause I'm like, I don't know if you folks are seeing this, but uh, the per ton price for glass so just went up another $10. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's so uh, it's not good. And we've had some uh, good talks with Winchester bar camps at Heartland Maggie uh, on the uh, the paramedic intercept it is changing over. I don't know if you saw the paper or not, but uh, we're switching from years with uh, Trinity Campion to Hartford here. It's going to take that over and run that contract at the same price for three years, which will save the seven towns three quarters of a million. So.
Anyway, lots lots going on, and we're hanging out there. I know Emily uh, did um, for the COG our trail grant. Yeah. Uh, rumor is next week. Yeah. Notices will oh, be so okay. we're we're hoping. Good. I just don't know where the bandwidth. We're gonna get somebody to yeah. start doing these projects because it's all this ARPA money is really taxing. You know, there's a lot of projects going so many hours of the week to do project here, project there, reval, you know, crazy to keep up with. Mm -hmm. But that's all in one. Well, we had the opposite reaction on our budget with our ambulance, our medic, as you all know. Um, but our uh, our public, our uh, boat, we went through our public hearing, uh, went through pretty good, uh, budget increased 3.76. Uh, we had a reval, uh, the average was 22.76. So. Um, with all that being said, we're uh, going from 15.25 to my suggestion of 12.75. We're inviting it to make it down a little bit lower. Uh, so that's pretty much a huge win. Also working with uh, Cardinal this year, starting a huge project with a, a very, very large culvert on uh, Minor Bridge. Uh, and then Public Works is going to be doing their own projects and some culverts around that we started last year and we saved a lot of money. Uh, we're also doing a lot of uh, reconstruction of bridges and rebuilding them instead of starting from scratch, also saving a lot of money. Um, Public Works over the winter uh, redid their own loader from transfer station. We have a very small public works. Um, it was it was very proud to rebuild this whole thing from from the ground up, and I assume uh, you know estimations is we saved at least eighty thousand dollars just by doing it ourselves. Uh, did some more work down to uh, public works as well, uh, getting them what they need. Um, I would love um, one of the things that I have uh, slated, and I'm looking for some recommendations. Uh, I want to redo the zoning regs. We did or, uh, all the town ordinances last year, and I want to rebuild them. So if anybody's got a good company that they work for, if anybody's recently gone through their zoning regs, um, I'm looking for recommendations, just kind of asking around of any good experiences that you may have. Um, also, uh, on behalf of the town hall, um, if somebody's really good, we, we've done a lot of uh, training, uh, FOIA training, uh, but if somebody's really good with uh, like Robert's rules and stuff, like maybe we could have people from each town uh, that can work together because there's a lot more questions. We've had a lot more uh, FOIA requests and conscious disruptors, I'll say, uh, within our town. Um, and I think it might be nice to have, you know, a group of people. I know I have somebody that I rely on at my town hall that's the go-to person, uh, but it might be nice to have the COG work together so that we have our own, I call it a subcommittee of people that you could ask questions and bounce ideas off of. I think that might be helpful. Um, so that's my, my ask. Uh, also, can't stay in the 14-day elections. Um, I'm going to be actually starting some tennis courts, so I'm also looking for recommendations before it goes up to bid. I think suggestion, like my tension concrete and all. And uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, so we're also busy in Cornwall. I have something waiting for me at noon, so I'll be leaving shortly. Uh, but our budget uh, meeting is coming up on the 19th. Uh, and we have a couple of initiatives that are happening in our downtown areas. We're working on our compost uh, grant with the state. And um, there is a um, still a patch of snow on Mohawk Ski Area. If anybody's missing the side of snow, come to Cornwall. <laughs> and while you're there, there is a kayak race in the Pusatonic this weekend on Sunday. So if somebody wants to see somebody go upside down in the Pusatonic River safely, with great skill, come on down. There's a new restaurant in West Cornwall. You can watch it from there. So, anyway, good to see you all. Okay. Well, that was pretty good in Salisbury. Um, we passed our budget. Uh, our rate stays the same. ARP is almost used up. Um, that was very helpful. And uh, we put that into probably like 10 different categories. Something like that. Okay. Um, thank you. And there are almost 100 affordable housing uh, units proposed in various stages, usually the very early stage. We have 350 people bringing their food waste to our transfer station, and we're trying to increase that and go into a larger sphere of composting to bring in some of the institutions like the private <clears throat> schools and the hospital. Uh, really like to try and get 30% of that solid waste out of, just keep it right here, right in the area. Don't truck it to Pennsylvania or whatever. It makes no sense at all. Hey, so, hey, hey Brent, no, we did here in Goshen was the, uh, we, we uh, cut the 
capital spends price in half just we can so we can get that weight out of southwest mm -hmm. i don't know if you guys Spell the compost we're, bins or not. We have so many bears that we're just trying to do it at the transfer station, bring in the biodegradable bags. But we provide those. And um, yeah, there's 350 people between Salisbury and Sharon. So that's pretty good. And uh, we've, well, done, we've done the same thing. It's increasing. Yeah. Every week. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a, oh, yeah. really people, a nice program. People get it. Yeah. You know, so. Anyway, Salisbury's good. Same more. The only thing I forgot to mention is that we have made our town treasurer an appointed official rather than an elected official. Um, it was uh, there was some consternation among the old guard, uh, but the uh, the problem is a, a treasurer is not a policy uh, officer there and getting somebody with those requisite skills um, I worried about in the long term. So uh, anyway, I got that through by uh, four votes, 25 to 21. <laughs> so uh, anyway, but that was so I forgot about that. Uh, let's go on. Oh, Gina. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Josh. Um, is very busy, <clears throat> same as all the other towns. Our uh, budget town meeting is next Friday to approve the budget. We have a small mill increase. Um, we're looking at 0.26 mill increase the first time, and I think this will be seven years that the mill rate has gone up. We were just awarded a um, SMF grant for $55,000 from DEEP to do um, that one year pilot project project for composting and we're calling it save as you grow. <clears throat> we have a trash talk this Friday. Um, we already have a lot of people registered for that talk. So that will be exciting. Um, and the deep commissioner held a press event on Tuesday, I think it was. And um, my father always used to say, always ask for the cone, you never know what she'll get. You'll get. And so when I saw her, I first thing I asked her was, can you come to our trash talk on Friday? And she said, absolutely. So um, she'll be our little surprise guest. A um, lot, a lot of road projects happening. We're also working with Cardinal and that's working out really well to have them take that grant work. because it, There's so many grants and it, everything is so complicated with the grants. Um, if anybody is wanting to um, toss in on a grant writer, I would be very interested in that. Um, streetscape phase two is in the design phase with construction targeted for 2024, um, which will take uh, the sidewalks out to our one of our affordable housing locations out past the firehouse and down to the other affordable um, housing location down south of town across from the um, greenhouse. Um, EV charging stations, there's so many out there. Um, I feel like the devil is always in the details. I've now gone through a fairly lengthy process with three different companies to find out that the, some of the fine print just wasn't going to work. So I would, anybody who's got a company that they've been working with or they could recommend, um, I'd love to get some pearls of wisdom. Um, my ask would be, <laughs> to see if the consultant helped with the Federal Highway Administration alternative fuel corridor grant money that finally has come to fruition because there's a lot of towns on the Route 7 corridor that um, now have a lot of money available to them, but could definitely use a little assistance with that. Um, big shout out to Deep NCON teams and the state police for their efforts last week in a three-day um, search and rescue for a lost hiker who turned out not to be lost, but um, sort of decided she wanted to go off the radar and um, was avoiding being found by many, many, many teams that were in the woods. <laughs> and helicopters and fixed wing search and rescue it was a big, big effort. So big appreciation to them. Center um, of the bill. <clears throat> exactly. Um, 
I toured Lake Warmog last Saturday with the Executive Director of the Lake Warmog Authority. So Washington, Warren, and Ken share that um, responsibility. And hearing you all talk about the mussels and the cunning fish and slimy skull, slimy skull <laughs> um, was, was sort of sparked the reason why I'm mentioning this. They, um, they have been working, Sean Hayden, who's the executive director for the authority, he works really hard. Um, he's a soil scientist by trade, um, but they work so hard to improve the condition of that lake. They have a lab that does um, the drag for invasives and do basically an audit around in different parts of the lake. This year when they did it, they found zero invasives in that big, big lake. So that's pretty um, impressive. And I learned there's this thing called a SECI test that is a very low tech, heavy metal um, disc that's sort of split into four quadrants and it's white and black so you can see it. It's on a rope. The rope has measurements and you literally just like drop it in the water and based on how, how long you can see that, how many feet down, that that sort of gives an indication of the health of the water and it changes from time of year. When um, Sean was doing some research back in, I think he said the eighties and nineties, the SECI test <clears throat> measured at a negative two inches. And so he went back to this guy who used to do those tests and asked, how could it possibly be that you couldn't see the disc two inches above the water and the guy told him because there was this foam on top of the surface of the water that just lived there for decades. Mm. And, and you couldn't swim in there, you couldn't do anything. And when we went to, we did the test the other day, it was, um, I think, two and a half meters before we lost sight of this disc. So if anybody has questions, contact Sean Hayden <laughs> because he's, he's pretty amazing. Um, um, uh, we're collaborating with Washington and Warren to do a joint active assailant training for employees um, and working on a lot of um, cyber initiatives to implement so that we can eventually get to the point where we can do cyber insurance. I'm sure everybody knows that our SRO vote um, failed, which was extremely frustrating. Um, and while we couldn't get a a second resident trooper put it back in the budget. We did get some, it created this sort of planned overtime model that was originally taken out, but then the board of finance put it back in, which was hopeful and, and you know, sort of that drop in the bucket. But where we are located, we're 40 minutes from True Bell, which is our troop, and just, you know, thinking about the disastrous consequences that could happen with any of the free private schools or the public school um, is just really frustrating that our voters and there were like 300 people who voted. Um, so that was a little frustrating. Um, that's pretty much everything. Josh. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry I'm not there with you in person. I've been pretty under the weather this past week. Um, in Winchester, we've got a bunch of things going on. For anybody who's driven through town, you've seen that the whole downtown area is starting to get ripped up. That's all part of the uh, bond package that was approved, $24.7 million plan um, to revitalize roads and bridges uh, over the next five years, this being year one. Um, we've had some really good luck with the state uh, recently. Two of the bridge projects that we originally thought we'd need to have 20% um, that 20% contribution to will only be, will, will, will be a 0% for us. It will be 100% funded by the state. That's uh, an extra five to $700,000 of savings right there, just on those two bridges um, over what we thought. We recently received a planning grant, or it was announced, I shouldn't say we've received it, but it was announced that we've received a planning grant uh, from the trails grant process through State Deep. Um, that's for the Mad River Recreation Area. That's the 1,200 some acres in and around the Mad River Dam. Um, the town owns another uh, additional set of acreage beyond that. Um, so this is all on state-owned land. There will be uh, several miles of trails developed in there in the next couple of years, uh, really trying to make it more of a state park than it currently is. Um, we are working really hard with the state to try and implement our $1.7 million Communities Challenge Grant. Um, 
uh, they, they seem to want a, a little bit more progress than we've made so far. So that's definitely been taking up most of my time recently. Um, we also have two congressionally directed spending grants, one of which was for uh, the 800 band radios um, that we had Mr. Field speaking about uh, a little bit earlier. Um, another one for the reconstruction of our public works garage, um, which is a, a blessing that we received that. Um, we held, just had our special town meeting that mill rates moving from 33.54 to 26.83 mills knock on wood so long as it passes that referendum on saturday the 27th um and one of the big projects that we're taking on right now is the sale of a lot of town-owned land and most not, i don't believe that any of that will end up abutting a neighboring town but um, i do want everyone to be aware of that that winchester owns about 254 parcels of of property around town when we last when I last checked um, a lot of that has been taken through different blight proceedings uh, foreclosures that sort of thing over time um, some of them are buildable lots and that getting them back on the tax you know the, the tax rolls will be a great help uh, and hopefully we'll see some new development for others they're so tiny that we're trying to find neighboring property owners to buy them and, and combine them with some larger lots so overall, um, we've got a lot going on, uh, but everything everything's running about as smoothly as it can. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Okay, we go on to the action items. Uh, approval of the meeting minutes. I have a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. Is, uh, what's on the minutes? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was here last time. Okay, we'll make that change. Uh, and uh, do I, uh, can we vote on it with the amendment with uh, recognizing that you actually were here? <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the second is the approval of the financial statement for March. Uh, are there any questions on that? So then, uh, do we have a second? So, um, all those in favor? Uh, opposed? No? Okay. Uh, just quickly to go through the last thing to end this up. Uh, we had a meeting of the executive committee of the board or what we uh, what we are recommending is that we continue the four officers we have until the uh, elections are done in November because there's going to be some changeover and everything else. We have a a couple rest. Uh, I will resign uh, from my office uh, at the conclusion of the October meeting. But before doing that, I will um, have already planned on selecting three people that will stay on, uh, that we know will stay on uh, as the um, nominating committee. Uh, one of the things that I think that we should change is I think that we should make these elections run in a calendar year rather than as in a uh, fiscal year, because we have elections in November, it doesn't make much sense to be changing officers uh, in the middle uh, prior to elections and maybe elevating the terms for two years uh, to recognize the uh, election cycle of the state. Um, and that will be uh, uh, approved at the June annual meeting. And of course, if you have other floor nominations, they can be done. And uh, seeing it's late, it's 12.02. Do I have a motion for adjournment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll just make note that those two changes to the uh, officers can be done as part of our bylaws revision. So we'll have to go into uh, the bylaw and make those changes. Pardon? I'm well, sorry, I didn't. 
the, the, the two changes, if we decide to uh, change the term limits or the term amounts and the, and the actual, you know, off this time, that would be done through our bylaws revision process. All right. All right. All right well, thank you, everybody. Thank you.